all. This is Dr. Mubeen Sayyid from drbean.com. Welcome to one more show. So we'll continue our discussions, our, our little gifts. And I wanted to go over JN1 today, just very briefly. But this was also my way of uh, meeting you before the holidays um, offs are there. So these are gifts for humanity. They're continuing. Happy holidays to everyone. Merry Christmas. Happy belated Hanukkah. Happy New Year. Seasons greetings. Whatever works for you. Be happy and be restful. And I would see you next year. And in the meantime, if you wanted to support this work, there are links in the description. Or if you wanted to get access to Dr. Bean, there are links in the description as well. So that is the quickest plug I have. So let's start with our discussion. So JN1, as always, I will quickly go over the references. So this is drbean.com. This is CDC about JN1. This is CDC data tracker. We'll look at that a little later. This is American Medical Association about JN1. This is Yale about JN1. CDC about tracking as well. And then respiratory virus activity in general. So as you look at this talk, uh, of course, one part of the talk will be that there is this virus, the JN1 variant, is rapidly growing. Now the question is, is it rapidly growing because it has something in it that gives it extra transmissibility? Is it able to uh, escape the immune system more? Or really, is it just the season and we are meeting and greeting and moving about and maybe we plus it is winter as well. So there can be many factors. I do not think that anyone has a good answer to this one. So JN1, symptoms, <clears throat> similar symptoms as before, headache, altered sense of smell. Although my little cartoons don't have noses, so they probably are protected by the sense of smell. <laughs> Cough, sore throat, congestion, runny nose, sneezing. Of course, runny nose or sneezing may not occur as well in my cartoon world only. So pretty standard um, symptoms. And the severity is also not known to be more than its predecessors. Muscle aches and fatigues. Will it cause long COVID? Will that be different in percentages and prevalences? We do not know. This is just too early. I wanted to make sure that I meet you for, um, for saying you happy holidays and saying, well, I'll see you next, <laughs> next, week, next year. So this is just an, a way to meet you. Plus show you, I changed my handwritings. So interventions, I'm gonna talk about the mainstream interventions because here I cannot talk about some of the other ones that you're already aware of. So you know others too, but updated vaccines or Paxlovids or Malnupiravir, Remdesivir, and just generally protect yourself. What I have found even after the vaccinations, I would continue to get COVID. I think many of you are aware of it. And the Flonase, uh, not Flonase, Cofix Rx is my saving grace. I have been using that not very recently, but when I started using Cofix Rx, the, the nasal spray, if, and I have no commercial interest with them, Cofix Rx, that is when my streak of getting COVID repeatedly broke. Now, was that because my body had developed enough immunity or was it really Cofix Rx? I do not know, it is just one person's experience, but I really, really had benefit from that. So I religiously keep it here next to me. It is next to my uh, bedroom as well, next to my bed in the in the little side table as well. So I, it is in my car as well. I trust it so much because it protects your nose and COVID needs the nasal area for it to grow. Characteristics. I think this is the most interesting slide in this whole one. Do you like my new writing style? <laughs> so JN1 is, first it was thought to be BA286. BA286 was also called Parola. <laughs> so first it, it was thought to be a variant of Parola. It is a variant. 
JN1 is a separate lineage. It has one mutation different from BA286. BA286 is a um, sublineage of BA2, which is again a sublineage of uh, Omicron's XBB15 that was in the US in 2021. So previously grouped with BA286, not anymore. First reference or first occurrence of this one in the US was in September. Then by the end of October, it was about 0.1% of the all variants present. By mid-November, within two more weeks, it was 3.5%. And now 8 December, another three weeks, it is 15 to 29% assessed. So, of course, that means it is able to grow faster than its previous and uh, you know ancestors or predecessors. The question, as I said before as well, why is it growing faster than them? Maybe it is more transmissible. Maybe it is better at immune escape. Or maybe, and nobody writes this down, I've read many articles about it, maybe it is just the season. Now, in terms of mutations on its spike protein, compared to BA286, compared to Parola, I'd love to call it Parola, BA286, it only has one additional mutation in its spike. Compared to XBB15, the 2021 Omicron variant, remember, uh, in November, October, November, December timeframe, 30 mutations in its spike compared to XBB. Uh, Edda says, are masks really helpful? I'm using K95 and leave them one quick on a box, then should go every day. Look, um, there are, even the mask discussion has become so, uh, there are corners of scientists who say they're useless, and then there are those who say they're useful. Then there are those as well who say that if you wear a mask, then you become a little more uh, open because you feel protected and safe and you go out more and you take more risks and you touch your mouth and you, that causes more infections. I think that there are all kinds of studies. Those studies that say the mask, because you're taking more, more risk, they should actually compare a masked person to an unmasked person in the same risk area. But anyways, uh, if you feel comfortable with a mask, by all means, use a mask. Uh, those who say that masks actually cause harm, that is actually wrong. So yes, um, if you feel masks have been protective for many reasons. I think we went overboard with masks in the beginning, but there are people who need masks. And if you feel comfortable or if you need masks because of your health, then by all means use it. And now the last part of this, see how quick it is. I just wanted to say happy <laughs> holidays and Merry Christmas and Happy New Year trends. So let's look at the trends. We're going to start from this one. This is JN1. Same things as I said, some of those are here as well. I just had to read a bunch of articles to put these things together. This is one of the trackers for the variants. So here, if you see, this is the data. This is the data that is solid, that has been there. And this data is the now cast, the CDC's casting of, thinking of, here is where we'll go. So if you see here in the JN1, in this uh, purple area, this is JN1. So it started with 3.5% share of the cases. And from there, 8.1%. Uh, by 11.25 and then by 12.09, 8 to 9 December, 21.4%. So it is growing faster. Then, as you know, Paul Borg has discussed this many times, we don't actually have data being collected from the whole country. So a good analysis of where it is more versus less is really not possible with the data that is being collected now. So it is collected in some areas and you can see how it is. Uh, this purple thing is JN1. So you can see that wherever it is, purple is growing. 
this green one is HV1 that was before this. So now HV1 is on the remission, is reducing, as you can see here, the green ones and the JN ones are increasing. So that is the variant. This is American Medical Association about um, the JN1. This is Yale about JN1. Nothing other than what I have already discussed. Now, final thing that I want to do is the trends at this time of the cases, hospitalizations, and unfortunately, deaths are occurring too. So this is the provisional COVID-19 death. So let's start with the hospitalizations. So this is weekly COVID-19 hospital admissions. So if you see here, it is from 2020, so the whole era. And so you can see, for example, here in the early parts, January 9, 2021, one week admissions were 115,455. Then if you see here, this is January 15, 2022. I believe this is when Omicron had hit. And 150,650 weekly admissions or uh, weekly new hospital admissions. And then if you see nowadays, um, 23,432. And it increased from 15,000. 20,000. So on November 4 it was the lower point, 15,000 cases, and then it has slowly been increasing. So these are hospitalizations. Then the unfortunate part, weekly deaths. So again, look at the big picture first. This is what it used to be. For example, at the peak of the deaths, unfortunate part, January 9, 2021, 25,974 deaths in one week. And then if you compare that to nowadays, still 1,305 deaths, for example, 1,327 deaths, 1,257. Here, the lowest in the recent was 487 deaths or were in July 8. July 8 was one of the lowest points of so 487 deaths because of COVID. And now they are about 1,305. So three or four times more. So that is the trend at this time. Now this wave, is it because of the winter? So if you see here, this is December. Then somewhere over here is going to be uh, July, so this is the summer time and believe this is the December time. So that is big as well here as well. See, this is October, December and then November, December time. So is it seasonality or is it the variant? But still, if you see in the bigger picture, whatever new variants, whatever mutations they have, their, their impact is still smaller than what it was before. And I think you can tell that how much do you stay concerned nowadays? I believe there is less. Sometimes people actually put comments, Are you still talking about COVID? So for some people, it is just gone, it's finished. But for some, it is not. And the final point, respiratory virus activity. So this is just respiratory viruses. That doesn't mean just the COVID, but more than COVID as well. So here, level of respiratory illness activity, Activity levels determined weekly based on the percentage of visits to enrolled patients, healthcare providers, or emergency departments for fever and cough or sore throat reported to ILI net. So if you see here, this was interesting for me. So I'm here in California. I thought that these were colder areas. These were colder areas too, but still the greener and lighter they are means minimal level of respiratory activity. Maybe the population cases uh, also is a, uh, is a factor. The redder and the darker they are, the very high or higher the respiratory virus activity or cases. So for example, if you see here, California, respiratory illness level high. Nevada next to us, high. Then Oregon, 
minimal. Washington, low. <laughs> Idaho, low. So if you see here, Arizona, high. Mexico, New Mexico, very high. Texas, high. So it's interesting. And all of these links are present in the description as well. So you can kind of look at those too. They have the data tables as well. So uh, you can see that the trends are slowly moving upwards. So this is percentage of emergency department visits. And by week, weeks, they are increasing. And I think this is seasonality as well. It is we moving about more, meeting others more, kind of sharing the, the pathogens a little more as well. Plus, maybe there is more than that too. So <clears throat> that is a discussion, quick one. But the reason was happy holidays, happy new year. And also, if you want to support some work and if you like this work, there are links in the description to support it. And there are links to get access to Dr. Bean as well at very less fee. The, the pain series that I'm doing, it is going on Dr. Bean with CMEs. Now, do you know that within another two or three days, we'll offer CME to majority of our videos. So that is also good news. Let's see. Jess says, could respiratory illness be including asthma, COPD, pneumonia, etc.? I think the way they look at this is, let me share this once more. They define it. Here and they say the amount of respiratory illness, fever plus cough or sore throat, causing people to seek health care is elevated. So that is a definition. Fever, cough, sore throat, making people seek medical attention where they get counted. Nationally, emergency department visits due to influenza are increasing. COVID-19 visits remain stable. Nationally, respiratory sensitive virus or RSV visits decline slightly, driven mainly by decrease in southeastern states. Lab, lab tests posit positivity for influenza increase nationally, while test positivity for RSV or respiratory sensitive virus and COVID-19 are stable compared to previous weeks. So it is really influenza that is increasing, RSV kind of reducing or stable, COVID stable. So I hope that answers your question, Jess. John, hello, how are you? Hey, Denise. Joy says, uh, thank you, Dr. Bean. Happy, safe, healthy new year to you as well. Thank you, Joy. Um, Okay, cool. So, Jim says, I tested positive for Streptococcus after regaining my smell and taste and testing negative for COVID. I'm on antibiotics for a week, over a week now. Well, get well soon and enjoy your vacations. <laughs> Alexander is making fun of me. Mild deaths. No. <laughs> I must have misspoken somewhere. Jess says, are these all blue states that collect data? So if you see here, it's, I don't think it is just the blue states that are collecting data, but uh, every state is kind of collecting it differently. Okay, so with this, have a, uh, <clears throat> Denise says, check the, okay, so let me give my, Quick shameless plug once again. If you wanted to support it, there are links. You can buy me a coffee or PayPal or Patreon and Substack. And then there is a link for Dr. Bean as well. Um, and Dr. Bean is amazing. This is awesome. Even when I have to read a topic, I go back to watch my video again. So, all right. So CDC, CDC waste water surveillance. Let's see if I can get to it without getting too... Surveillance for COVID.
Okay, so Denise, this is the best I can do <laughs> by Googling in front of everyone. So national trend one year, make a selection from the filters to change the visual visualization information. So, nationally, the waste wa water viral activity level for COVID-19 is currently from DB, very high. So here we are. If we go back to, this is the 10-12-2022, this is how it was at that time. The highest that has been is here. Uh, this was December 31st, 2021, 10.3. And if you look at now, December 9, 2023, 8.2. So yes, it is very high. So in the wastewater, COVID is actually high. So Denise, thank you for uh, bringing that up. So is there some, some discussion? Yes, Don, it's the injected. He does not want to say it. I do not even know what we're talking about. Uh, <laughs> all right, so what else is happening? <clears throat> so on my channel, everyone is welcome. I have never cared for the race, religion, or even your your own grouping and positioning of being against vaccines or for vaccines or against masks or for masks or against shelters or for shelters. It has never been my um, guiding pattern. The reason is very simple. What I do is present medicine with mechanisms. The purpose of that is to explain so you can think in terms of those concepts. Now, when you think with those concepts and what do you do with them or how do you think with them, that is up to you. And being an internet <laughs> medical doctor, it is actually not my place to ask you to take a vaccine or not take a vaccine or wear a mask or not wear a mask. That is actually not ethical for anyone who does it. It is not correct for them either. So all I can do is teaching. And I have taught the benefits of the vaccines and the trials of the vaccines. And we have sat through eight hours long FDA vaccine debriefs as well. And we have discussed the, the uh, side effects of the vaccines and the mechanisms of those as well. So I think I'm the only channel that has actually talked about both sides. So I, I just saw in the comments um, that some folks are attacking each other or maybe even attacking me. But really, it's education. We have to understand and learn before we can start taking positions. So this is uh, where we are at. Once again, happy holidays, happy new year. I'll do you want me to do a lecture tomorrow and the next week uh, week as well or see you all next year? So tell me whichever way you like. Oh, I... Uh, <laughs> Algebra, I was trying to show your comment on the screen and it accidentally put you in the timeout. I am so sorry. I was trying to click on it. Apologies. Algebra Bean was banned and their comments were removed. I'm so sorry. I will have to now go and unban you. So my apologies for this. I think I should not click more, <laughs> more comments before I ban anyone else. So shadow ban. Shadow Man says, another lecture, please. We love you, Dr. Bean. I am so sorry, Algebra. Uh, please, <laughs> my, my, sorry, accept my sorry. 
uh, I'll have to go afterwards in the in the blocked area and then find your name and unban you. I am so sorry. Okay, so uh, if I could do it tomorrow, I will come in tomorrow. Uh, otherwise, uh, next year, but I'm going to try to be here. Maybe we'll do a chit chat tomorrow. So uh, let me know. <laughs> Margaret says, I think a decision was made to take. So Margaret, that is true. But at the same time, um, I present, I'm here to serve the community. So if they would like to talk, then uh, we will. So uh, I just see more comments here. I think that at least you can give me and the audience this much respect not to attack each other when I am presenting that I do not attack anyone. I do not take a position. I present data as there is. So I would, I would expect that we all, regardless of our positions, not attack each other. Especially then at this time of the year when everybody is happy and, and uh, getting along. And I unfortunately blocked algebra. So, okay, so lecture tomorrow. Cheryl says, um, Nick says, <laughs> ban whoever contradicts the mainstream. Yep, that's science. I haven't banned whoever contradicts the mainstream. I have actually talked things that contradict the mainstream as well. So, um, but I do sometimes block those who insult others. That I think is not needed. Yes, Denise. <laughs> the science is Dr. Bean is safe and effective. And look at the picture there. Thank you, science. <laughs> the science. I remember this. Remember when uh, Fauci said, I am the science? Yeah, that was funny. Okay, so with this, thank you very much. Have a good day. Uh, if you would like to support, there are links in the description. There are links as well to get access to Dr. Bean. I'm going to now hang up and go and unban Algebra. Algebra, I'm sorry again. Happy holidays. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye for now. Um, Stephanie says gloves. Gloves. Uh, Stephanie, gloves. Elaborate a little more. <laughs> Card says debunk the funk and back to the science would attack you. They are professionals, you see. I actually have a very good uh, friendship with Susan. Uh, she and I had a discussion last week as well. I support her too. But if they attack me, that is their position. I don't do it. See, everybody has a different way of uh, presenting and discussing. My way of presenting is not to alienate the audience and try to convey the message, which can then be useful for you to think the way you want to think, but at least have that information. <laughs> Cynthia says, wear your mask with Santa on it. I don't have that mask, but whoever has it should wear it. Okay, thank you everyone. Bye-bye. Off to going unblocking algebra.